Hey, how's it going guys? So I just saw The Last Jedi, and I thought it was pretty good overall. There were a couple things I thought they could have done differently, like that Leia scene where she's thrown out of the ship, only to save herself just in the nick of time. I mean, in my opinion, that was the perfect way for them to write her out of the script. But what do I know? I just make YouTube videos. Alright, here are 15 things you may have missed in The Last Jedi. This is the only movie in the Star Wars franchise where no one utters the phrase I got a bad feeling about this. At one point in The Last Jedi, Luke mentions Darth Sidious. This is the only time he's ever referred to Emperor Palpatine by that name. Luke refers to lightsabers as laser swords while talking to Rey. This is actually what George Lucas intended to call lightsabers in early drafts of Star Wars. When Rey hands Luke his lightsaber, if you look closely at the back of his mechanical hand, it still has the same burn scar from when it was shot by a blaster bolt during the fight above the Sarlacc pit at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. I think one of the biggest questions many people had after watching the movie is whether or not Luke was actually dead. We've seen Jedi disappear before, as both Obi-Wan and Yoda seemingly vanished and basically ceased to exist. This however is not easily done, as it requires great strength in the force, wisdom in its ways, and for the person who dies to be at peace with themselves. All of this definitely applies to Luke at the end of his life. Even Leia comments on how she felt Luke die with peace and purpose. This leaves the door wide open for Luke to reappear in Episode 9 to help guide Rey, as Obi-Wan once did for him. There were actually two clues that it wasn't the real Luke Skywalker on Crate. His beard was brown and he appears younger than he is, which was probably what he looked like the last time he saw Kylo Ren. Also, Luke's feet make no red imprints when he walks over the salt, while everything else does. The Jedi books didn't get destroyed. Instead, Rey took them from the tree and hid them on the Millennium Falcon. You can see them in the closing moments when Finn goes to grab a blanket for Rose, which means that when Yoda set the tree on fire, he wasn't actually destroying the books, but rather hiding the evidence that they were missing. Because what they represented in Luke's mind was distracting him from what was really important. So Yoda unburdened him. Towards the end of the movie, we see Luke on Octo, staring off at two suns on the horizon. This is a reference to the two suns that were visible from Tatooine when we were first introduced to Luke in A New Hope. One item that surprisingly appears a lot in The Last Jedi are the Golden Dice. They first appear when Luke boards the Falcon and takes an interest in them. He then delivers them to Leia, and finally, they're picked up by Kylo Ren before vanishing in midair. The dice were seen only briefly in the original Star Wars movie, and then didn't make an appearance again until The Force Awakens. According to Pablo Hidalgo, a member of the Lucasfilm story group, the dice were integrated into Star Wars lore. The story that you would hear if you traveled to cantinas or watering holes around the Star Wars galaxy is that those dice were involved in a game of Karelian Spike, a dice using version of a card game called Sabacc. Rumor has it that Han Solo won the Millennium Falcon from Lando Calrissian with those dice. During Luke's Force Illusion, he says he will be with Kylo Ren forever, just like his father, if he were to strike him down. This is very similar to what Obi-Wan says to Darth Vader during their duel in A New Hope. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> The name of Benicio Del Toro's character is not given in The Last Jedi, but he's credited as DJ. And it's no coincidence that in the end, his advice to Finn matches up with the acronym Don't Join. If there's any doubt that it's a clever play on words by the filmmakers, this clears it all up. When he's first discovered, he sports a pillbox hat with a metal plate mounted on the side, engraved with Arubesh characters. The letters spell out his mantra from the start, Don't Join. As we saw in The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker's X-Wing is submerged yet again. However, the ship does live on, at least part of it does. It seems like Luke needed a door to his hut, so he fashioned one out of parts from his X-Wing. The trees growing on Canto Bight are actually a species native to Alderaan, Leia's home planet which was completely destroyed by the Galactic Empire in A New Hope. But thanks to seed banks, the trees were able to live on and are now considered absolute must-haves for the obscenely rich. 
If you didn't notice, the stable boy who has the rebellion ring uses the forest to pick up a broom. He also stares off into the stars, the same way a young Luke Skywalker once looked off into the sunset. During the movie, Luke drinks green milk from an alien, which was a nod to the blue milk he drank with his aunt and uncle in A New Hope. Thanks for watching, you guys are the best. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the movie. I'm hearing a lot of mixed reviews, so it'd be, uh, it'd be interesting to hear your opinion. Alright, till next time, peace.